Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. Know what you're thinking, Chris, you've been gone for a while, what's been going on? Well, to be honest with you guys, I've been doing a lot of testing on my side and I keep running into a bunch of issues. And that's actually what we're gonna be talking about here today. So a while ago I was like, hey guys, Linux is doing really awesome with gaming and I wanted to do a lot of content on that. So obviously, been testing a lot of Linux stuff, but I've been running into a ton of problems. And honestly, I can definitively say that Linux gaming, while good and far better than it was a few years ago, it's just not ready yet. So we're gonna go over some of the trials, some of the things that I found out. I'm not a Linux expert, so a lot of you guys out there that are much more familiar with Linux, you might be like, you're just making stupid little mistakes. That's true, but if I can't get a game up and running with about an hour's worth of tweaking, for me, that's just too difficult. So that's what we're gonna be talking about here today in this video, but before we get into it, Today's video is sponsored by AliExpress. AliExpress sent over this brand new Bluetooth headset for us to check out as part of their global shopping festival season, which is going on right now. They have awesome deals with up to 70% off pretty much everything on AliExpress right now, but particularly in tech. And they wanted us to check these out as these are brand new and would make great gifts for the holiday season. So let's check these little guys out. All right, starting off, the packaging is very nice. It's a uh, high quality packaging, something like you get with like an iPhone. So let's open these guys up here. All right, so we have basically all of our information up top here. And then we just peel this guy off. Then we have this little guy here, I'm betting. So this little package here, this is just where our headphones are gonna be. So we'll pull this guy out. We have ourselves a little accessories box. Let's see what we got in here. All right, so taking out the accessories here, we do have a USB-C to USB-A cable. I'm assuming that's for charging. And then you have a bunch of different ear guards. So this way you can pick out which one makes the most sense for you and feels the best. Package also comes with a sticker and an instruction manual in probably every language known to mankind. All right, time to take a look at the headphones themselves. If you look at the back here, it does have the USB-C port. So this is how you charge it. You put it in this little dock here. Uh, when we open it up, a little light turns on, which is pretty cool. And then we have our headphones. They do come with another set of ear guards. So, well, you basically have every side that you need. And these are magnetic, which is really nice. So you just kind of slide them right back in uh, for charging when you're ready to go. Overall, pretty standard accessory set here, but I really like how firm this case feels. It feels very hefty and meaty, so it doesn't feel cheap. It definitely gives off the vibe of a high-end product. So I'm very interested to see how these perform. So after extensively testing the One More Color Buds 2 with games, movies, videos, pretty much everything that most people are going to consume with headphones like these, I can honestly say the audio quality is crystal clear, excellent, punchy. I'm not an audio guy per se, but they sound great to me. I would argue they're almost as good as my over-the-ear headphones that I use regularly. So as a to-go option, I would say that these are great. The big thing for me that surprised me was there's no interference, no drop connection. That's a big deal to me, and I really, really appreciated that. And right now, AliExpress is offering an even better discount by offering you guys $10 off any purchases over 100 by using the promo code TechSale. So you can get yourself an extra discount off of these great headphones. Whether or not you're gonna use them for yourself or give them as a gift, these are a great product and I suggest you check them out by clicking the links in the description below. Now back to our video. All right, so about two weeks ago, I wanted to do a video on Soldier of Fortune. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. It's an older game from the 90s. Great, just run and gun shooting game. It's a hell of a lot of fun. So I went ahead and loaded it up on GOG using Lutris. And I'm like, okay, let's play this game. It runs OpenGL. I'm like, it shouldn't really be a problem. And it didn't work. Ironically enough with that game, it also did not work on Windows. So I had to find a fix for Windows first. That's a pretty simple fix. If you guys do want a dedicated video on that, I can do it. But basically you need to make a copy of the executable, just change the name and then run that executable. It's a silly little issue, but it does work on Windows. So I'm like, okay, I now have the game running on Windows. Let me go ahead and try that on Linux. That still didn't work. And at that point in time, I'm like, okay, screw it. We'll just leave this one alone. This is a video that we're just not going to do now. And okay, so that took up a fair amount of time. 
Then I was like, okay, let's try doing like an entire series. Let's see if this runs on Linux. So I'm like, okay, let's do the Batman Arkham series. This is a great series. I love these games. And I know a lot of you guys want to play these, especially if you're gonna be getting something like a Steam Deck or if you're trying to move away from Windows, you probably want this series to run if you like these games. So anyways, load them all up, install them. Once again, I'm using Lutris and GOG because honestly, if you can get a game DRM free, I'm always gonna recommend that. So if it's on GOG, I'm always gonna use it on GOG. Anyways, went ahead and installed all the games. Arkham Asylum worked. Okay, that's cool. Uh, was it Arkham Knight worked, which is the newest one. I figured that one might have some problems. That worked just fine as well. Next up, I tried Arkham Origin. That one also worked. I'm like, okay, cool. We're, we're doing pretty good here. There are some issues, and I'm going to talk about that. Even though that the games would run, there's also sub-issues on top of this. But Arkham City, the last one that I tried, because I'm like, well, Asylum's working, and the newest one's working, and then I just kind of work my way backwards. Arkham City would not run. It kept coming up with this NVIDIA configuration error thing. Um, if I have footage, I will show it here so you guys can see it. Regardless, on Windows, this typically means like Agia's physics or the physics software just isn't installed properly. So all you have to do is just go back through and just install the version that ships with the game of physics and usually games will run. So I'm like, okay, we can do that in Wine. Uh, we can pick what packages and stuff we want to install. So I tried uh, Wine Tricks and installed the latest version of physics to see if that would work. It didn't. Then I went actually into the specific wine version design for Arkham City. And then I installed the version that shipped with the game that's in the reddest, or maybe I used Arkham Asylums. Uh, one of the two, basically an older version of physics that should work with the game. That didn't work either. And at that point, I'm like, this is the fix. So I went online. That's the only solution that anybody had for this particular problem. I couldn't find any other solutions. So I had to let it go. And this wasn't the first time that this happened. Obviously, I just mentioned Soldier of Fortune. And there were actually several other games that I have tried here recently to get up and running on Linux. And it did the exact same sort of stuff here. Either the game just wouldn't load up, regardless of what version of Wine I'm using, um, which is probably the easiest fix. If you load up a game, especially using Lutris, if the game does not run, if you use like an older version or a different version of Wine, a lot of times that'll work. I'd say about half the time that will get the game up and running. Um, but the other half of the time, it just doesn't work and you just don't have a whole lot of information to go off of. Now, a lot of people that are more familiar with Linux be like, we'll go into the terminal and it'll tell you what the errors are. Honestly, if it gets to that point, I'd rather just run the game on Windows, to be perfectly frank with you guys. If I have to go that deep, this is just too far beyond the average person for sure, because if I'm not willing to do it, I would venture most other people don't want to deal with this. Now, here's the other key issue that I had when running a lot of different games in Linux. And it's not even like an API issue. Uh, it's just like a per game issue. Some games actually just ran fine, but a lot of games, Arkham Asylum is a good example, you'll actually get a lot of stuttering when you first load it up. And what the, what's going on is the game is doing shader caching. If you're familiar with any sort of emulation, like uh, Wii U emulation with CMU or RPCS3, when you first load up a game, uh, you get a lot of micro stuttering because the game is actually caching shaders. So this way it can run the game smooth, you know, the second time because there's no shader cache already pre-made under those conditions. Obviously, it's designed to run on a PS3 or a Wii U. It's not designed to run on your graphics card. So you get basically the same exact experience. This happened to me in, like I said, DirectX 9 games like Singularity, happened in Arkham Asylum, uh, even newer games like the Mafia Definitive Edition. That's a DirectX 11 game, happened in there. But then there are other games that just ran perfectly fine, perfectly smooth without any issues. So I couldn't find any sort of like commonality between these to kind of identify maybe these games run better, maybe you need faster hardware. As I mentioned, like Arkham Asylum is an old game at this point. I think it's 2008, 2009. 
Uh, I was using the Core i5-11400. We had 32 gigs of DDR4 3200 from Kingston, and this was using a Sapphire Pulse RX 588 gigabytes. So this is a much more powerful system than is necessary to run these games. So even having excess processing power on CPU and GPU, excess RAM, basically excess of everything, the game still was stuttering. So it wasn't even like there's not enough processing power there to make the game run smooth. It's just the nature of the beast. And that was really the final straw. Like I said, after Arkham City didn't work and I noticed this micro stuttering, particularly on Arkham Asylum, it also happened in Arkham Knight, but it was actually less in Arkham Knight, which makes even less sense when you think about it. It's a much newer game, much more shader heavy game. So there's no rhyme or reason as to why this was happening. Um, one of the games that I did try, it was Freedom Fighters. It's an old game, also on GOG. If you guys want to check out any of these games, I will put some links down below. These are all great games that I recommend you playing. That's why I wanted to test them on Linux and do a video saying, hey, look at all these great games that you could play. And that's one of the main reasons why I haven't done a video in a while, because every time I'd get to a point, I'd hit into like a roadblock, couldn't get past the roadblock, scrap the idea, and I'm like, guys, in my opinion, I'm just going to have to stick with Windows. And honestly, that's going to be the overall point. If PC gaming is one of your main things, which it is for me, it's one of the biggest things that I do. I run this channel. I browse the internet and I play video games. That's basically what my PC does and some video work for personal use. And that's about it. Um, Windows is what's going to run best because that's what these games are designed to run on. Now, if you're one of those people like me who doesn't like the fact that Microsoft is very intrusive and spying on you and all that kind of stuff, there are ways to mitigate that. Um, even the automatic updates, that's one of my biggest pet peeves with Windows 10 was no matter what, like your operating system would update. There are ways to turn that off if you're running Windows 10 Pro. And this also works in Windows 11. I have been messing around with Windows 11 as well. And you can basically use the same mitigations there. So if you guys are interested in a dedicated how to make, basically keep Microsoft away from your system as much as possible video, let me know. I might do one of those for you guys, kind of like a Windows tweaking guide. I can let you know what I do every time I reinstall Windows. Um, but that mitigates the problem. But honestly, if you really just don't want Microsoft getting any of your information at all, having nothing to do with you, what you can do is you can just run offline. To me, that's a better option than trying to go to Linux because the games will run. So if you have a large GOG library so you can install the games without the internet, just go ahead and just unplug your computer if you're very privacy sensitive. And honestly, nobody can take your data if you're not collected to the internet or connected to the internet. So that's a better option than Linux. And once I came to that conclusion, I'm like, Linux is great. I really like it. I like the desktop format. It's much snappier. I use Pop OS like I did in the video. I like the operating system. I like how it works. I like the layout. I like pretty much everything about it except for the software execution. Now, obviously, there's always going to be hiccups because the software was not designed to run on that platform. And I understood that. And if I could get, I don't know, 80% of what I wanted to do running, that would have been fine, but I would say it's probably closer to two thirds and then probably half of those had that micro stuttering issue. And that's when I really just had to draw the line. So yes, Linux does work for gaming, but you have to have a lot of asterisks to get there. So if you're used to emulation and the little micro stuttering while shaders are caching does not bother you, Unfortunately, I'm not that guy. <laughs> I'm not that guy. The shader caching thing is my biggest pet peeve with emulation. I personally want faster and faster hardware to try to mitigate or eliminate that before I will even run games emulated. But if you're okay with that, Linux will not be a problem for you. So it's going to just really depend on your own personal use case. Now, for other things, like anything that has a native Linux app, like if you just want to do like basic Discord, browsing the internet, office workflow, maybe your your productivity software does have a Linux version. Yeah, it's great for that. I'd say it's much, much better uh, experience than Windows is. It's much smaller, cleaner, and like I said, everything just feels snappier. Um, it's much like when people said going from Zen 2 to Zen 3 or Zen 1 to Zen 2, how they said everything just feels snappier and it's very difficult to kind of uh, articulate. I would say the same is true for going to Linux. Everything's just better and more responsive and overall just cleaner. 
But at the same time, your software stack, what you want to do is going to be extremely limited or come with some huge asterisks. So at this point in time, all the Linux content that I wanted to do, which was quite a lot, obviously, because I've been trying to make Linux content, I'm gonna have to let that go because I just can't recommend it at this point in time. Now I know Steam with the Steam OS and obviously with Proton, they're really gonna be pushing it. And typically my experience with Proton is a little bit better. The thing is, is as we keep hearing about DRM issues out there, I'm not a big fan of Steam and the games that they really produce at this point in time. Um, like all the EA games, you still have to go on Origin. All the Ubisoft games, you still have to go to Uplay. Personally, I'm much more interested in DRM free at this point in time, considering all the issues we're starting to find out with older games on DRM just no longer being supported and you're just SOL. Essentially, you don't own the product versus on GOG, you actually do. So it's just gonna really depend on what you want. If you're okay with taking the risk of not being able to play your product in a few years, and SteamOS works better, you might want to go that route, or uh, you know, using Steam and Proton might be a better solution. Uh, but for me, once, or if, it's really more of an if instead of a once, uh, but if Lutris can kind of get to that point where it'll install the GOG games, they actually do work, I don't have to fiddle with too much. Changing Wine versions isn't that big of a deal, but if they can get it to that point, which they almost are, like I said, probably about 60% of the time, 67% of the time, uh, it will just work. It's just all those other times there are issues. And then, like I said, the little stuttering thing is a big deal for me. So I wanted to bring this video out. I wanted to let you guys know where I've been, what I've been doing, kind of get some value out of all this information that I've accrued. And I just wanted to bring this to your attention, especially since Linux is gaining a lot of focus with the Steam Deck. I know Linus is doing his uh, test with Luke, and I know there's a lot of other people out there now giving uh, Linux a shot. I think that it's good, it's just not great, specifically if you're going to be gaming. Uh, for productivity, as long as the software is there, I think that it's perfect. So it just depends on you, your use cases, and what you need, considering we focus on gaming here on this channel. I'm not gonna recommend it moving forward. Um, honestly, just like I said, I would recommend running Windows offline if that's your primary concern. Or like I said, there are ways to mitigate these things. And if you guys wanna see a video like that, let me know in the comment section below. If you like videos like this, please smash that like button. Please subscribe, please share with friends. That really does help me out. That's really all I have for you guys here today. And I will catch you guys in the next video.